Hi all, Plantside Agent here. Today we're going to take a look at a uh, foldable wood stove that uh, you can store inside of an Altoid tin, so uh, stay tuned. Okay, let's take a look at this. Uh, this wood stove is an idea I got from uh, Waypoint Survival, and I'll go ahead and put a link to his video that he made on this stove and uh, also well I'll probably put some other links too but anyway so uh, standard Altoids tin I did paint this one uh, actually with some automotive engine paint on the just to, for fun okay and uh, what we have here on my version and I'll discuss the differences here in a sec is uh, it's a little great to get the fire up off the bottom of the pan this is a uh, Altoid tin alcohol burner that uh, Waypoint Survival also did. He did a bunch of Altoid stuff that, that I thought was pretty neat, so I made my own. But this is my version. I'll have a separate video on this with a burn test. Okay, and then uh, inside the tin is the uh, sides to the stove. And uh, he made his out of a out of a, a, a cookie sheet, and I did too. Uh, I've got a cookie sheet from uh, the dollar store, and I used my Dremel cutoff wheel to uh, cut it out. I, I've been using it for other stuff, <laughs> not just this stove. Okay, well let's let's go ahead and discuss the stove first. Okay, it's got uh, two side pieces. It has. The well, this I'm sorry, these are the two side pieces, they're identical, and then you have the uh, the feeder and and the uh, back end with the vent holes. Okay, now, uh, waypoint his his stove, he didn't oops, <laughs> he didn't drill out uh, any of these holes and he didn't use this grate, he just built his fire in the bottom of it. So, uh, I'll talk about why I did that later. <laughs> pick up this piece but anyway the way this works is uh, you uh, cut out the uh, the notches now he didn't give any any directions on sizes and and all of that stuff dimensions um, he figured yeah if you're a crafty person uh, you could do it yourself which I'm a crafty person and I did it myself but since I had to measure out all of the uh, bits and pieces anyway I uh, I went ahead and drew it out, and I've got all the dimensions for you. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I will share them since I already did all the work anyway. I'll just go ahead and share it. But I do, I did draw them all out, and uh, I scan this in, and I'll go ahead and post uh, the scan copy in the video right here, so you can uh, pause it and take a look at it. And then uh, I'll also uh, put a link to a web page where this same scanned image is uh, out there so you can get the dimensions if you want to make one yourself so anyway we'll talk about it uh just quick you got a couple of vent holes you got the slots up here for the for the long pieces and then you have two slots to fit on the uh, altoid tin and this one's a little bit wider because you can see you've got to cover the uh well let's do this one be easier uh you have to get it by the lid. Oops. Okay, there we go. Let's see what we're doing. So this one fits in here like this. And then the back piece is cut out the same way. And that fits in here like this. Okay. And then the side pieces, they've got a slot cut in. To cut in so it fits the slot here. It goes in there. Same here. These are interchangeable. Yep, get in there. There we go. Okay, now let's kind of make sure that's in there. As you can see, once it's all put together, it's quite stable. And you can put a small cup on it to burn with. So it's pretty stable. Now, we'll get into the, uh, the additions I made. One, I put a screen this is made out of hardware cloth and this is to raise 
the uh, the wood or your burning twigs and stuff up off the bottom because I found out you get a cleaner burn if you have the fire up off the bottom of the pan and I think in the end of this video I'm going to uh, put in some clips of the burn tests that I did and showed you how it didn't uh, it didn't burn very clean if you didn't have this in here and also I went ahead and drilled out some holes in the base here to also let more air in oops so and I cut this the same the same to fit on the inside of this originally I had it to fit the whole fit in the whole bottom of the uh, the Altoid tin but then what happened was the uh, oops there we go um, yeah wrestling in here what happened was that I couldn't seat the these ends here because they hit on top of the grate. Well, you only need this much grate anyway, so you can see how the the grate fits in there, and then you get good ventilation. This this burns much cleaner, much nicer, especially for like uh, pellet pellets because they kind of got stuck in the bottom, and I had a lot of unburned stuff. And I'll show you that the little videos at the end of the clip. Uh, this obviously isn't the one I use for my burn test. I just did all my testing on hole drilling holes and size, and and this is my test one and. This is my nice clean one <laughs> and it will probably just become a demo <laughs> or a, uh, a shelf piece for looks. So let's see, uh, what else can I say about this? i pause this while I think. Okay, so when you're, all, when you're all done and it's cooled down, you just take it apart. And uh, you can store it a couple different ways and just throw these. Yep, let's get over here. <laughs> So these side pieces in, or if you wanted to, if you wanted to uh, make it more of a kit, you can always, uh, like I said, put the uh, little Altoid burner in there. Also, I didn't do it, but uh, Waypoint he actually took one of these mini Altoid tins and uh, made a buddy burner out of it. That's another option you could use. I'm really not a fan of buddy burners because they put out a lot of soot. Soot. But you know whatever you guys like, and you can you know it'll fit. I got some Tinder Quicks here and a little Ziploc, and then you got you could put in a uh, a mini Bic and that'll fit in there. And you can throw all these on top or the bottom. So you got you got room to get yourself a little pocket size uh, wood stove, and it does work. It will boil water, um, like a 750 milliliter uh, cup. Okay. Uh, also, um, I, I took a few pictures during the construction of this. You know, I was drawing this this stuff out, and I'll go ahead and put those at the end of the video too, so you can uh, you can look at those. And also, the uh, I'll put probably put those at the very end, and then I'll I'll attach the videos I took on the uh, different burns and how they looked. You know, when the burns completed without before I drilled the vent holes. And added the uh, the uh, the little grate to raise it up. So, yeah, if you want to see the burn and construction uh, photos, just go ahead and uh, stick with the video here. If not, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. This is without the screen, and uh, you can see it's not getting very airflow. In fact, it uh, it's pretty much just down to a smolder right now. Okay, here are the remnants of the burn without the grate, but the vent holes. The vent holes really didn't make much of a difference. Still see a lot, uh, a lot of residue in there. Even though I had these vent holes, it wasn't really enough. You need to get air underneath it. So, anyway, I'd say this is a failure. Yeah, uh, you can see little bits of the pellets are falling out the sides of the stove.
Okay, looks like a good clean burn. Nothing really left. So the little grate and the vent holes work great. Okay, the last little bit of this video, we're going to talk about uh, the construction of this stove. And uh, <clears throat> to start with, I went ahead and uh, I drew everything out so I could get the measurements. Uh, I measured off of the stove and to get the depths because uh, Wayport Survival didn't give you anything. So I had to start from scratch. I had to measure the widths, the, the lengths, the, the depths for every, for every piece of that. So... Um, I drew that all up. I did all the work for you guys. All you got to do is uh, transfer it to your metal, however you want to do it. But yeah, this is uh, I got the dimensions for the the, the slots to go down into the uh, into the tin, the slots that the side pieces up here fit in, also where to cut out uh, the side vents and also the the back vents, and also on top of this is the feeder is here so this is the front and the back oops I'm sorry let me start over again um, uh, let's eh, we'll just start all over on this part <laughs> okay so uh, I got the sheet here that uh, you know I measured everything out and then we got the slots to fit into the uh, the tin itself and this is the slots to uh, for the front and the back uh, for the side pieces which are up here uh, and then we've got uh, it's kind of awkward sorry uh, this cut out the slots that you slide in the top and the two uh, cutouts for the uh, side venting and then this is the cutout for the front and the back which will show you the where the two holes go and the size for the vent holes and also this is for the cutout for the front so the front and the back is here kind of together and uh, the two sides are up here and of course this is mostly so you can get the, the the slots for the front and the back piece okay and then uh, after I decided that I needed vent holes for this to burn better I went ahead and uh, I got the measurements here for you the uh, the, the size and, and location of the vent holes and uh, for the for the long side and then for the short side of the Altoid tin and then I've got uh, some damn cat footprints <laughs> on my paper <laughs> the uh, the one that was scanned in doesn't have the footprints because actually my wife scanned it in and she cleaned those up yeah <laughs> which was helpful uh, I'll leave I'll post the uh, a picture of the, the scanned in at the very back of of this video okay so what I did um, once I got all of the uh, the measurements uh, set up, and uh, what I got here, this is some other sides I was playing around with, uh, and and so that uh, they went on like this, so that the uh, pellets wouldn't wouldn't slide out of the slotted holes like the normal slotted ones. They fill out, but anyway. Uh, I didn't draw any of these up. I decided not to use it. Okay, but what I did do is I made templates to first before I before I cut anything out. So I I cut everything, uh, made templates out of cardboard with all the measurements, so it would fit in there. And then uh, first, and then I trans used the templates, transferred those onto the to the sheet metal and then cut them all out so I got all my templates and then of course I used uh, tape to mark out where I wanted to put the uh, the holes this is the tape I put across the front this is the tape I put on the side to uh, to drill out the holes so that's that's how I did it and uh, be honest with you oh and yeah here's the well I guess uh, yeah Here's another template that I used for the uh, to cut out the sides for the uh, for the vent hole, and of course you can see here I've got the template for the uh, for the slots to slide down on. Okay, and then got this piece of paper in here. No idea why I have that in there. Oh, some measurements. <laughs> I just threw all this together. 
So anyway, uh, that's what I use. I use the templates to build it up and cut everything out. I use the uh, a cutting cutoff wheel from a uh, for a Dremel tool to cut out the, the sheet the sheet metal. So um, I'm going to post some photos right now. The first photo that you'll see here is the uh, cookie sheet with the uh, the the four sides laid out in the sheet before I cut them. And the uh, second one slide shows the uh, cutout, the uh, four sides already cut out of the uh, cookie sheet. And here's the uh, next slide, is the uh, just showing you the templates. And uh, this next shot is the uh, the four sides with the individual uh, slots that hold it together cut out. Okay, and then uh, before. I went too much further. I put the stove together before I cut out. This is before I cut out the vent holes in the feeder hole, and I just put a pot on top of it, the stove, and it looks like it's going to work. And um, and here is the last shot. Is I'm kind of set up to start cutting out the the feed hole and the vent holes. So uh, that's uh, that's just kind of the construction on this thing. And uh, again, here's the. Uh, photo of the um, all my dimensions for the stove and uh, I think that will do it so uh, again thanks for watching and uh, if you have any questions just go ahead and post them in the comments and like I said I'll have uh, the link to uh, the other videos in the description and also a link to a web page that has the uh, the photo the scanned in image of all of my dimensions if you want to go that route. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye bye.